Um, our next uh, speaker is the, the North of Scotland. He's the, he is the North of Scotland, he's the Northern North East. And it's Kenny McCree. And I don't think I've heard this enough for Buck in here. Oh, Kenny McCree. I like to use this thing, by the way. I like to use the hand gone. <laughs> right. Buck in here. You okay who Buck in here with? Yeah. Oh, well, they're halfway there already. <laughs> <coughs> Passing Carlton Graveyard the other night, I heard a sound and got a fright. The hair stood up on the nape of my neck. I peered through the gates just to check. And there, by a dim lantern light, I beheld a waste of his neck. Two men were digging a water grave. At, late, at that time of night, that was no way to behave. As I stood, I watched, I made me soon, but deeper and deeper they dug into the ground. Jen said, How far do we have to go? The other said, Just another fit or so. As it went <coughs> deeper and deeper into the layer, I was sure I was watching Barking here. The tall grave robbers were all repute, here at last were being found out. It was just about then a cat gave tall shrieks. I got such a frick and he had jumped out my boots. <laughs> but the back and hair, the cat didn't need trouble. They just carried on, shoveling her up. At last, <coughs> during the hole, they were completely hid. When I heard the creaking of a coffin lid. I wanted to scream and shout out loud. When out the grave they came with a white shroud. They put the body in a big sack and put the bundle, and then put the bundle on his back. They came towards me at the gate. My hair was thumping at a hell of a rate. I pushed into the shadows as far as I could go, so that not even a wee bit of me would show. I can't if I was seen by the offy pair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have was seen by the hopping pair. I would end up in a sack, so I took great care. They put the bundle on a wooden barry to use for the grizzly load to carry. They crept out their kept yet we hardly assumed the look left and right and furtively ruined. They troubled the body down the street to Knox's house where him they'd meet. They stopped him. Chapped on his door. They had always been there before. They lifted the sack into the house as if it was just a bag of refuse. When they come out in a wee while, in the dim light, I could see them smile. I was watching them free in a stair when they passed that off a pair, sharing out their money they had been given, selling bodies for the benefit of the living. That was no bad for next work. What do you think, Mr. Burke? I know bad, I suppose, Mr. Here. The more I night, we'll get some mare. <laughs> when he passed, I ran away him. I didn't report it to my shame. I was scared that they would look me out. What would happen then, I had no doubt. But doesn't it make us stop and think the lowly depths that some folk will sink? What they did was certainly no funny. It's queer what some folk will do for money. 